want to destroy Bitcoin. You'd need $20 billion in hardware, then $300 million per week in electricity costs, and you'd get maybe a few hours of chaos before your money becomes worthless. Welcome to the most expensive suicide mission in history. And this, this is why Bitcoin's energy use isn't the bug, it's the entire point. But here's what's really crazy. The same energy mechanism that makes Bitcoin impossible to attack is also solving one of the biggest problems in renewable energy while cleaning up the environment. And wait until you see how it's helping people who don't even know what Bitcoin is. I know this sounds crazy, but I've actually got the receipts. Let me show you. We've been programmed to think that energy use equals waste. But what if I told you that's backwards? What if the energy use is the entire point? Before Bitcoin, every attempt at creating digital money failed for one simple reason. You can copy digital files infinitely. How do you stop someone from spending their same digital dollar twice? Every solution before Bitcoin required trust. Digicash, trusted company, went bankrupt. Egold, trusted company, shut down by the government. Bank transfers, trusted intermediaries. Satoshi's breakthrough wasn't inventing digital money. It was solving trust. And here's the key insight. You can't fake scarcity in the digital world with code alone. You need to anchor it to the physical world. Enter proof of work. The genius is brilliantly simple. You turn electricity into security. Here's how it works. Miners race to win a lottery that requires trillions of tickets. Guesses. Guessing equals burning electricity. The winner gets Bitcoin. Everyone else verifies the work in milliseconds. And here's what most people miss. The energy isn't wasted. It's converted into security. Every kilowatt hour spent mining makes Bitcoin harder to attack. But it gets even more interesting than that because what I discovered is that Bitcoin mining isn't just one thing. It's like a Swiss army knife. And wait until you see all the different problems this one tool can solve. And here's the beautiful part. Bitcoin automatically adjusts. Every two weeks, every 2016 blocks to be exact, Bitcoin recalibrates the mining difficulty. More miners join, the lottery gets harder. Miners leave, the lottery gets easier. Think of it like a thermostat for security. Too hot, it cools down. Too cold, it heats up. Always finding equilibrium. Result, consistent 10 minute blocks forever. No matter what, which brings us back to that $20 billion attack and why it's actually impossible. Let me break down what that attack would actually look like because the math here is wild. To successfully attack Bitcoin, you'd need to control 51% of the network hash rate. That's about 500 exahashes per second. To match 500 exahashes, you'd need 3.5 trillion gaming laptops running simultaneously. That's roughly 400 laptops for every single person on earth. The hardware cost alone is 15 to $20 billion minimum with a massive discount. But here's where it gets insane. The electricity costs to run that attack, $300 million per week. So what would you actually get for all that money and power? The ability to double spend your own coins, maybe for a few hours before the entire network detects what's happening. Then Bitcoin's price crashes your stolen coins become worthless. Your $20 billion in hardware becomes worthless. It's like buying a $20 billion flamethrower to rob a lemonade stand and then burning down the lemonade stand with your own money still inside. Game theory makes attacks economically suicidal. But here's the part that really blew my mind. Now, you might be thinking, but couldn't a state actor just secretly buy all this equipment and then turn it on at once? No, and here's why. To get the hardware, you need two to three years of global ASIC production. That's not something you can just hide. Supply chains talk, competitors notice. Bitcoiners on Nostra will figure this out. And even if you somehow kept it a secret, the moment you turn on 10 gigawatts of mining equipment, that's 10 nuclear reactors worth of power. The entire network sees it instantly. Bitcoin's hash rate is public everyone would watch you approach 51% in real time. Exchanges would prepare, developers would write fork code, the community would be ready. By the time you flip the switch, the trap is already set. 
You'd spend three years and $20 billion building an army that announces itself the moment it shows up. And the community has three years to prepare the fork that makes your army obsolete. This is why no state actor has even tried. It's not just that the attack costs too much, it's that you can't hide it. And by the time you're ready, so is everyone else. It's like spending billions to control a bridge only to watch everyone build a new bridge and abandon yours. Now, stay with me here because this is where it all clicks together. The same mechanism that makes Bitcoin so hard to attack, it's solving an energy problem as old as electricity itself. But before I show you how, you need to understand something about electricity that changes everything. And nobody tells you this. Electricity is use it or lose it. Can't store it easily, can't transport it cheaply. It's simultaneously expensive during a Texas winter storm and then free when there's too much solar. As Troy Cross said, and it is radically scarce and radically abundant at different places and times. And here's a number that's going to blow your mind. In West Texas alone, 10% or 15% of all the solar this year was curtailed, right? Because just because you, you couldn't put it out into the grid, there was nowhere for it to go. So it's just thrown away, literally thrown away by the grid because there was nowhere for it to go and no one to use it. And storing too much in batteries is dangerous. Picture this, a solar farm in the middle of nowhere, West Texas. Peak sun, panels generating massive power and nowhere to send it. The power lines aren't built yet. Before Bitcoin, that energy just evaporated, wasted. Now it mines Bitcoin and that Bitcoin revenue helps to fund the infrastructure to eventually connect that solar farm to the grid. Is the best option to waste it? or is the best option to put it to some type of use, right? And to kind of also create this price floor that can be put there. And here's the beautiful part. The home is being powered by that solar energy. They don't even know anything about Bitcoin. They don't care about Bitcoin. They just know their electricity works and now their bills went down. Bitcoin is funding renewable energy build out and the people benefiting don't even realize it. That's the Swiss army knife in action. And that 10 to 15% waste that's just one example. The same mechanism that makes Bitcoin impossible to attack also captures methane that would burn into the atmosphere, which is 80 times worse than CO2, uses solar energy grids throw away, monetizes excess hydropower, creates value from stranded energy in remote locations. One mechanism, multiple solutions. Bitcoin creates a price floor, always a buyer, always above zero. Take Kenya, for example. Joe Nakamoto documented a hydro plant in rural Kenya, generating 533 kilowatts. The tea factory and local community only needed 200 kilowatts. So what about the other 333? Before Bitcoin mining, that energy went to waste. Now, Bitcoin miners use the excess. This makes the whole project profitable enough that people actually build the infrastructure in the first place. Small businesses can now operate and kids can study after dark. Families can refrigerate medicine. All because Bitcoin mining made the economics work. You can find out more about this and other crazy uses for Bitcoin in the real use case video in the description below. And this same energy mechanism that makes renewable projects profitable is also what makes Bitcoin impossible to attack. But I know what you're thinking. What about the environment? What about all that energy use? Let me show you three numbers that destroy that entire narrative. According to a Cambridge study from April 2025, here's what's actually happening. 52.4% of Bitcoin's energy is sustainable energy and it's rising at a crazy rate. When I first saw that number, I literally went back to check the source three times. Because if this is true, and it is, then everything we've been told is backwards. And here's what they won't tell you on the evening news. Here's the breakdown. 42.6% renewables, wind, solar, hydro, plus 9.8% nuclear. 70% of Bitcoin miners are actively engaged in climate mitigation strategies. The trajectory is crystal clear. Bitcoin mining is getting cleaner faster than most traditional industries because miners are hungry for the cheapest energy possible. And that is renewable energy. That's the global free market working at its finest. Now, critics will say, but that's still using energy. And they're right, but they're asking the wrong question here. The question isn't, does it use energy? The question should be, what does that energy do for us? Here's the comparison nobody makes. Bitcoin uses less energy than traditional banking, less than gold mining, and it secures $2 trillion 24 seven 
globally for everyone without permission. Bitcoin isn't wasteful, it's efficient. Troy Cross nailed this. We're in a moral panic right now about Bitcoin itself and about mining. And if you just look at the social side, you think Bitcoin is getting hammered in the media and in the popular mind. And if you look at what Bitcoin is actually doing and what Bitcoin mining is actually doing, it, it, it's just the opposite. Like we're starting to see these applications of Bitcoin that are pro-social explode. We're starting to see Bitcoin's um, power usage get more flexible. And we're seeing, starting to see it benefit grids more. These things are radically out of sync. All the headlines scream, Bitcoin wastes energy. While the reality shows it's getting cleaner, more flexible, and more beneficial for everyone every year. We've seen this pattern before. Nuclear power was gonna kill us all. The moral panics always break down when the incentives become clear. And Bitcoin's energy incentives, they align perfectly with the renewable energy transition. Which brings me to the refrain that we all need to understand. When someone says Bitcoin uses too much energy, here's what they're actually saying. Bitcoin is too secure. Bitcoin is too hard to attack. Bitcoin is too decentralized to control. The energy consumption is the entire point. Troy Cross said it best. Don't waste precious resources w where and when they're scarce. Like if, mm -hmm. if you are using tremendous amounts of electricity for uh, recreational activity during the winter storm, you're a dick and you shouldn't <laughs> do that, right? But if you're doing it when, when power is abundant on the grid and there's negative pricing, like good for you. That's the updated rule that we all need to embrace because Here's what makes Bitcoin fundamentally different. Without energy cost, there's no security, no trust, no value. It's just another database. All other altcoins. You can fork Bitcoin's code in five minutes. Anyone can copy the software. It's happened before many times and it will happen again. But you can't fork the energy that secures it. You can't copy billions of dollars in real world capital, infrastructure and electricity that's been invested into the network. The miners, the nodes, the computers checking it 24 seven. That's what makes Bitcoin valuable. The same mechanism that costs $20 billion to attack also uses excess electricity when there's too much and shuts off when there's not enough. Helps fund solar and wind farms by buying their excess energy. Makes money from energy nobody else wants. And is always willing to buy power, even in the middle of nowhere. That's not a bug. That is literally a superpower. Most people miss that since 2021, Bitcoin's hash rate is increased by a 6x, while the energy consumption only grew by 40%, meaning miners are getting dramatically more efficient at securing the network. As renewable energy gets cleaner, mining naturally migrates toward it because cheapest power wins. The incentives just align perfectly. Critics who don't understand this will stay wrong and they'll keep being wrong as Bitcoin continues doing exactly what it's designed to do. That $20 billion impossible attack, that's what energy buys you. Energy anchors Bitcoin to the physical reality in a way that no other digital system ever has. Without energy, Bitcoin would be just another altcoin, another database, another project that requires trust. With energy, Bitcoin is the hardest money humanity has ever created and a tool that makes renewable energy projects actually profitable in the middle of nowhere, turning waste into wealth and speeding up energy abundance for everyone. I recently set up a little home miner to contribute to the network and actually understand how it works. The Bitcoin way helped me figure out what hardware I needed and how to set everything up properly. If you're thinking about mining, running a node, or securing your Bitcoin properly, they offer a free 30 minute call to see if they can help. They'll walk you through what makes sense for your setup. Links below. Look, this is just one pillar of Bitcoin security, the energy pillar. But without understanding the other three pillars, you really can't see why Bitcoin is so secure. And here's the thing, most Bitcoiners get one of them dangerously wrong. It's the pillar Jeff Booth and Jack Dorsey say could actually threaten Bitcoin. And it has nothing to do with technology. It has everything to do with something you are probably doing right now. You can see what this is by watching this video. Because once you understand this, you'll never think about Bitcoin security the same way.